Like you don't want the ex-wife and the ex-husband, you know, yelling at each other and saying, well, you make your house and hitting each other over the head with tree branch. But imagine, you know, it's going to be like people will be on the edge in the apocalypse and you may have to deal with people just losing it and falling apart. And um, definitely we're going to need some psychologists out there and some medical doctors and psychiatrists because we're going to have to like de-escalate situations and bring peace to maybe a really negative and terrible <laughs> confrontation that could end in bloodshed and death you know so think about that part of survival that's going to be more challenging the stuff that's in our minds and we think about oh yeah i've got to survive i need water first of all you can't last more than three days without water think of the rule of three you can't last more than three days without water. Oh, but backing up, you can't last for more than three minutes without oxygen to your brain because at five minutes, you're dead. Your brain's dying, okay? So you've got to have oxygen going to your brain. You can't last more than three minutes without that. That's why we learned CPR. So if someone has a heart attack, we can get the blood still going to the brain and the oxygen, okay? So three minutes for a heart attack or lack of oxygen and after five minutes for sure pretty much although there have been exceptions of people who were found a child was found um in really cold water like 45 minutes after um he didn't have any oxygen they were able to get the water out of him and do cpr and he survived because he'd been kept really cold and his brain didn't die even though it didn't have oxygen right away. So there are exceptions. So maybe you don't want to give up after five minutes. You want to at least try to resuscitate someone, but there's not much hope. Three minutes is the safety mark. Five minutes is any, you probably, probably should call it. <laughs> what time did he die? 5.52 a.m. <laughs> you know, like in the doctor shows. Watch a lot of doctor shows. They could come in handy, but don't believe everything they say. Yeah, so knives. Okay, I have this one, <laughs> which is kind of cool. This was in my car also. Um, so this again has the little knife to cut your seatbelt if it's stuck. Because we imagine in all those shows, you know, the car drives off into the river and you've got to break the window with this thing on the end and then cut your seatbelt. So this is a good knife for that. And this also has um, some cool stuff inside. I have not figured out what that... Yeah, I, I do know what that is. Um, inside is flint to make a fire so i don't really want to pull that out <laughs> yeah the thing about gadgets is you gotta do all the screwdriving and picking apart and do it right all right so i'll put this back in i'll screw this back in later but you can pull out the flint and you know flint is like a special rock and with a special metal and you make sparks and start a fire on dry leaves or tissue or something in the forest because you have to have heat so back to three minutes for oxygen three hours for exposure you can't be cold i mean it could be a lot less if you're in the water but if you're out in the forest you better not be more than three hours in the rain and the cold you can't take any more that's probably exaggerating it could be less time um and any time below 60 degrees fahrenheit you could get hypothermia and die all right so and the colder it is the shorter time you've got um, so making a fire is a really good thing to know. And there are special like black scout survival. He has really special little fire pouches you can buy that has the dry tinder in it and an even more reliable flint than probably this knife has. And I have another one in my car that's even more reliable than this also. Um, because making a fire could save your life. So three minutes, no oxygen, three hours of exposure to cold or heat. Uh, I think most will really focus on the cold where you might need to build the fire. Three days for water. I mean, you don't even want to go one day without water, but <laughs> you won't last more than three days without water or liquids that are comparable. Some have water in them. So this knife, I've showed you a couple things and um, it's got a clip. And then of course you pull out the really big rugged, main knife and what's different about this one is it's black it's really really sharp sharper than even that other one this would be good for surgery if you had to do it um and it's got these 
this part here that's really rugged, can you see? Um, <laughs> I can say face. That's for cutting, maybe sawing wood or sawing a bone if you had to, you know, let's face it, that would not be fun. But if you had to saw a bone to get a guy's leg off so he didn't die because he's um, had no oxygen to the lower part of his leg and he's going to, you know, it's gangrene and if you don't cut it off, he's going to die. That could work, okay? Um, so this is a nice rugged knife. It's really sharp and it's got the added, you know, flint making compartment to make a fire and you could use it in your car so as i mentioned before um you can never have too many knives in my opinion <laughs> and i think most preppers would agree with you just ask the black scout survival guy he's got the coolest knives and i mean oh my gosh one of them costs like 500 dollars because it's it's custom made and like forever titanium or something you know that thing would last like past the apocalypse but i can't afford those prices so i'm doing this at walmart prices sam's club getting it free for my preppers online that kind of thing all right then here's something which is just a basic little gadget it's a headlamp i should probably just show you my hair i oh, look so redheaded today and um yeah i, I got that on the right way no, <laughs> got it on upside down. <laughs> so this is a good little headlamp. I don't think I meant showed you this before. And it's got a little, and it's it's rechargeable. So it's not solar powered. I, those are hard to find, but it's rechargeable. And all my flashlights are either rechargeable or solar powered with hand cranks so that you don't have to rely on batteries because you don't want to have to rely on batteries. That's a really place you don't want to go. Like, honey, where's the batteries? batteries <laughs> oh yeah i forgot those <laughs> or oh they're 10 years old and they've all leaked all over each other and we left them in the flashlights so now the flashlight's all corroded and doesn't work because the battery exploded watch out for that <laughs> so this has a little light at the top it's nice and bright and then it goes dim er and then it flashes and then it has a red light because you know this is good for like a low light situation like you want to not call too much attention to yourself at night you're like scouting for your neighborhood watch group <laughs> and uh you don't want to call too much attention you want to see but not too much this might work this would definitely work better than bright light and then if you had an emergency it flashes <laughs> i like this one it's simple it didn't cost much it was like two rechargeable flashlights for like i don't know 10 15 bucks at amazon pretty good deal okay now <laughs> one more tool to show you before i show you the queen of all my gadgets <laughs> uh, this is a simple little thing i got at the auto pair auto shop you know auto repair shop like I don't know, AutoZone <laughs> or something. You can get this at Walmart. And it's it's a really cool little telescoping tool. And it has a magnet at the end. And I have locked my keys in my car more times than I want to say, embarrassed. Um, and it costs $100 in California to get a locksmith out and <laughs> have them break into your car, which takes them like 30 seconds <laughs> with a special tool. Uh, so if you leave your keys in your car and the windows open a little bit, you could actually use these if they're in a retrievable position to retrieve them because it telescopes. That's so cool. Telescopes. <laughs> and you can maybe like, oh, there are the keys. Okay. I've got the window open and, and, you know, try to get them down. Like the keys are on the seat of the driver's seat, you know, oh, I can get it just reach down in there and the magnet would grab the keys and pull it through the window and you don't have to pay a hundred dollars this thing is really cheap i recommend getting these i mean these on amazon can be expensive some of them are even further telescopic and they have flashlights at the end so that you can retrieve almost anything like like you lost your engagement ring in your sink and you know it's at the bottom of that pipe well you can put one of these down in there and with a flash with a light on the end and you could see and retrieve your wedding or ring or engagement ring diamond gold you don't want to have to replace that <laughs> or explain to your husband or fiance how you lost it that would be embarrassing you did what you you dropped it down the sink didn't you think to take it off when you washed your hands <laughs> 
you know how much that thing cost? I have a I have a wedding ring with a this. Yeah, I like silver. This is silver, not gold. I do not like gold. You will never see me wearing gold. <laughs> and I have like um what do you call it? Cubic zirconia because I don't need to have a diamond. They're expensive and you know, uh, cubic zirconia works for me and silver. You know what's good about silver? And this looks like silver is silver is a natural antibiotic and you can actually buy colloidal silver which is purified water with little bits of silver in it and drink that you know so much for, per dose per day over a few day period and you could fight off an infection like a sinus infection i've actually done it it's better on your body than taking you know antibiotics which can ruin your stomach and make a bacteria resistant to them um, and in the Middle Ages, I know this because I'm an English major and a history minor, in the Middle Ages in Europe, the ruling class used sterling silverware, like spoons and forks and knives when they ate, sterling silver. And, little, and also they used silver cups for their wine and little bits of silver would get into the food and the drinks and protect them from horrible plagues like the bubonic plague for example some of the rich people never got it because the silver protected them and they maybe didn't even realize that i think eventually they figured that out <laughs> and they're like yeah we've got to have, keep that silver going when we eat and drink <laughs> you know um in fact um i know this this is really interesting when the the uh pioneers were crossing america and going from the east part of America to the west, you know, like on the Oregon Trail uh, and the wagons, um, they would put a big silver coin in a big um, bottle of milk and it would preserve the milk and keep it from going bad. That's amazing. Think about that. Okay, so silver is very powerful. There are amazing things God made that can help us. You just need to know the secrets of it. That's why I wear silver because I know it doesn't cost as much. It looks beautiful and it's healthy. All right, so now one more thing. It's taking too long. I want to make this short. <laughs> this, you can't really read the words, is my really weird gadget of the day. <laughs> and it comes in a nice little box. Can I open it? Maybe. <laughs> ah, that's the way it opened. Okay. So I open it up and take it out and it's got like an ear earplugs you can plug in and attach to it and somewhere it has a recharging cable which doesn't seem to be in the box. <laughs> I don't know where that thing went. Um, and <laughs> can you guess what this is? <laughs> All right. Anyone have a clue? Maybe some of you are like, yeah, I know what that is. Okay, this is something you use if you want to find a bug. I don't mean the kind of bugs that crawl around on six legs. I mean the kind of bugs people might put in your house to listen to what you're saying. Or a hidden camera. Or a GPS tracker. You can find anything that puts out a signal, a radio signal, because this is a radio wave um, finder. <laughs> it's got an antenna. And um, you can turn it on and it makes cool noises <laughs> to let you know there's, okay. All right, so is there a radio in your hair? <gasps> yes, there is. It's my phone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Put that, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. It's sensing the, the signal from the phone. All right. And you can use this to go throughout a room. Oh, over there, it's not so bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's around here, isn't it? <laughs> to find bugs, hidden cameras, or radios. The, to find the hidden camera, um, you turn it around, and you turn on the laser. And when you look, you see the camera flashing back at you. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is so cool. Uh, I'm still trying to find that signal. It's even got a little compass on it in case you forget where you are, <laughs> which direction you're headed. So I like this. It's cool. That way, you know, 
did I turn it off? There, I just did. That way, you're not going to be having someone spy on you. You don't want that. You don't want somebody, and like you rent a nice motel, and you're with someone special, and you do not want someone filming what you're going to do, okay? So you can find the camera and any other, uh, you know, listening device and get that out of there and complain to the management. Hey, how did that end up in my motel room? You know, I'm not coming back here. In fact, give me my money back. I'm out of here. <laughs> so um, it's good to know, you know, that because nowadays you never know. Some person could just like illegally tape what you're doing. I mean, not tape. Tape's an old word. Ille illegally video what you're doing or make a audio recording. And so this thing could come in handy for when you travel. It doesn't weigh much and it takes batteries, but they last a long time. So I would recommend this if you really need something. All right, there is one more gadget. No, actually, <laughs> there's more than one. <laughs> I lied. Okay, I've, I got I got a bag from the car. Yep. <laughs> T-Mobile, <laughs> my free T-Mobile bag for being a good T-Mobile customer. It's pink and black. And in this bag is... <laughs> Another bag. Yeah, because you can never have too many bags. <laughs> that was another bag. And this is one of those cheap, you know, little bags you buy at like Vons or Walmart. This one came from Walmart. And inside, it's got the reflective stuff. And in there is another bag. <laughs> and you're gonna, you're like, well, she's weird. Um, and this also has reflective stuff. And there is a purpose for this. But reflective stuff. Because I have some electronics in that in here. And if there's an EMT, electronical, uh, oh, EMP, sorry, electromagnetic pulse, EMP, electromagnetic pulse explosion, or, you know, that would happen with a nuclear bomb, if it were detonated high in the atmosphere, it would fry all the electronics everywhere. But some engineers, electrical engineers say, if you have your stuff well insulated with um, tin foil, not only do you create um, the ability to block signals to those things, but you would protect it from an electromagnetic pulse. So, in here, I have some electronic things I would not want to fight immediately if there were an EMP attack on America, such as, you know, my really cool world-class radio, which is emergency, and I can monitor the emergency channels and the weather channel channels and try to get help to see if anyone else is alive out there. Because <laughs> you can never have too many gadgets, really. Oh, I have some batteries because, you know, some of my stuff's kind of old and would need them. I have another solar powered flashlight and I have a solar powered power source. <laughs> so this is my solar power source where I can plug in my phone or, you know, small electronics and charge them up using the power of the sun. It's my, what's, is this the, my Patriots. <laughs> See, <laughs> my Patriots solar powered box for recharging your phone. What else have I got? Oh, this is a really cool flashlight, but it's very, very bright, but it needs batteries. So this is the one exception I have to no batteries. This thing, if it had batteries in it, <laughs> would be so bright you would not believe. <laughs> okay, you want to like totally blind the whole area around you, use that one. Oh, oh, I've got another power box for recharging phones. Some more batteries, nothing too much exciting. A couple of headsets, charger cables. Don't forget those charger cables because you may have electricity somewhere and could recharge your stuff. All right, one last bag. <laughs> All right, red for danger. Red for save it before you run out of the house with your bug out gear. All right. I don't know how to open this baby. No, nope, that's not the way. <laughs> it has too many zippers. All right, which way? This way. Okay. 
And this one, I went a little over the top with the tin foil because I wanted to create a Faraday cage, which would block any signal from going in to this stuff and protect it from an EMP. So I got extra heavy duty tin foil and I folded it to make it double thickness. And some electrical, electronical engineers will say if you have enough tin foil over electronics and it's folded and it's like two or three or four layers thick, you should be able to save that stuff from an EMP. So I have my walkie talkies in here. I have my telescope, telescopic, well, kind of telescopic, 32 times or more <laughs> zoom camera. And this is really good for when you need to take photos of something far away or you're doing reconnaissance. And my other walkie talkie, because they're not good if there's just one. Another Patriot power bank, solar powered. Another radio. You can never have too many really cool. Oh, by the way, my two radios are both solar powered and hand crank. The yellow one too. This is my favorite. This one's solar powered and it has a hand crank, hand crank on the end. And this is a smaller version and they've got antennas so you can use them as radios uh, worldwide if you're lucky. What else? The charger for the walkie talkies a whole bunch of cables and chargers because you know you may have electricity and also you're going to have to connect the charger to the solar power charger bank okay so don't forget those chargers even for phones because you're you're going to have to connect the cable to some kind of power source and hopefully it's solar powered and who knows you may find some random electricity in some cabin in the middle of the woods you never know they could have a generator well yeah so i also have a solar powered generator that's my really big gadget it's in my closet it's heavy it's a solar powered generator that you can use to keep your computer and your heater and your lights going in your house and it's solar powered it's green it wasn't cheap i like it um, a lot of people have gasoline generators. The only problem with that is you've got to remember it's run by gas and it, it could put out carbon dioxide. And if it's used in an enclosed area, you could all die. So watch out for those gas run generators. Plus you need the gas for it. And gas, as you know, can catch on fire. <laughs> so I like solar powered, but you know, there may be days where there's not much sun. It just takes longer. Eventually the sun's going to come out, I hope. <laughs> so I have some random flash drives, you know, for your computer to save up all your important stuff because they would be fried. Your flash drives with all your important stuff on it from your computer, like the book you're writing and all your other books and all your important documents like your birth certificate and your marriage license and your passport, all those important things you've taken photos of and stored away, your finances, they would get fried by an EMP, so you really ought to keep them in a Faraday cage made of tinfoil so that no one else can access them with a signal and so that they will not be destroyed in an EMP. Just saying. And then I've got my extra cell phone, my backup cell phone, because, you know, you could lose your main cell phone and your life may depend on your cell phone. And you can use the Patriot Power Bank to recharge your cell phone, remember to have the charger cable. And this could save your life, it's so important. Of course, it'll fry if it's not in a Faraday cage like this bag is, all right? Okay, one last thing. I think that's the last thing. Yeah, I saved the best for last, is my super duper night vision goggles. these are so cool and i got some i got it's actually not goggles it's actually one sided which is good because you only want to use one side so that you're this is what black scout survival guy says always if you have night vision goggles which you need in an emergency situation in the apocalypse when you're trying to protect your encampment from invaders you're going to need to be out there in the desert or the woods or the urban uh, scenario and you're going to need to know if um, someone's trying to approach you at night you need to see where you're going these things are wonderful and the minimum cost is a hundred dollars 
that's what this class I got at Walmart. I mean, it's probably not the best. They can be like $5,000, but I, I'm on a budget. <laughs> I'm hoping this one will do its job, but I have been really pleased with it so far. It does take batteries. So for this, you do need to have batteries. Um, I think there probably are some you can recharge, but this one is not one of them. So um, it works just on one side and it's electronic. So you turn it on and it can zoom up. And this is the most amazing telescope I have ever used. I mean, even when there's no night vision required, it shows really good detail far away. So I was very impressed by this. I don't even remember the name of the product, but night vision goggles, you know, with a nice little handle, you should have a handle for all your electronics is a really good thing. It could save your life. Okay. Cause you, you need to have set a watch. If you're in an area that you could be invaded by enemies, definitely set a watch. And you know, every eight hours or so you change the shift of the watch and that watch person's going to need to be able to see what's coming at night. Also, um, black scout survival recommends, uh, infrared, uh, monocular as well. Monocular means one because you want to keep your other eye used to the light outside. You don't want to just do two eyes because then you're not knowing what's going on in real time around you. So keep one eye kind of watching what, whatever's going around you and the other eyes kind of looking in the distance at um, the night vision goggles to see, is anyone out there? Can I see them approach? Now, if you had a barrier like trees out there and someone could hide behind the tree, that's where you need your infrared goggles so that you could sense the heat output of that person. And you don't see, you know, who that person is. You just see like the outline of, of a body behind a tree. It would be in red because it's sensing the infrared heat from the body. Um, but that is very important if you have obstacles people could hide behind. So I, I need to get one of those, honestly. I haven't yet. That's on my list. <laughs> I think you're never quite done getting all your gadget stuff. You should see all this stuff that's all around me now, just spread out everywhere. I'm going to put it all back. What a lot of work. Okay, one more thing. I am wearing something that's really high tech, and most people would have no idea what that is. No, it's not any secret jewelry. It's this. This. This is a simple tied in a knot scarf. Or is it so simple? I would give like 50 bucks if you could figure out why this is special. Any of you have a clue? I bet my daughter, would, she would know because she's smart. She's a good prepper, Jessica. I love you, Jess. Okay, this is special material. This scarf isn't that long. You see? Okay, it goes around my neck and I always loop it to create a circle. Why would I do that? It doesn't work well if it's not looped. What does it do? Why is it important? It's a Faraday cage. This material has gold. No, sorry, silver. This material, because the gold was too expensive. This material has silver woven into it in little patterns that are Faraday patterns. And whatever you put in this is protected from any EMP or any radio signal or any phone signal. In fact, to check it out, I wrapped my phone in, in this one night. And when I woke up the next morning, not only had it kept my phone from getting any signals, it made my phone turn off and I had to do a soft reboot <laughs> to get it back on properly. So this will definitely just put a phone in this uh, and it will keep out all signals and you won't be able to send any either. A Faraday cage. Uh, people have Faraday bags. I actually have one somewhere here. <laughs> I showed it to you. Um, yeah, put that baby. So I left that in the car. You can have a little Faraday bag that's full of like tin foil. Uh, a properly expensive one would have like woven silver or gold or copper. They use a variety of um, precious metals to make Faraday bags or scarves or cages. Um, and also this protects me because I'm on my computer a lot. Last night I was up pretty much the whole night on my computer, very stupidly looking at all the Amazon Valentine's Day specials. 
I went all the way to the end of their list. I think it took me four hours. That was crazy. <laughs> I was just a little obsessed. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to sleep alone tonight. I am not going to go to sleep alone tonight. So it was like 4.30 in the morning before I finally went to sleep. My eyes were like, oh. <laughs> I would not recommend four hours on Amazon's big list of Valentine's Day special things you could buy because they put everything on that list. Um, but this protects me from all the time I spend on my smartphone, which is too much, and all the time on my computer, which is also too much. But I'm a writer. I have to use it to write um, and to keep up my blog and my YouTube channel. And um, I'm on Twitter a little bit and Facebook, you know, LinkedIn, all those important things. Um, I'm just a minor princess in the world of social media. I'm like, I'm like the minor princess from the unknown country, <laughs> princess Lavinia from <laughs> Lustafia, <laughs> wherever that is, we don't know. Um, I'm not definitely not a queen, not a well-known princess or anything, but I'm, I'm trying, you know, and I spend too much time at it, but hey, you know, my husband's in prison. <laughs> it's, it's like one of the less, um, bad things I could do. <laughs> so this protects me because it, it creates a Faraday cage around my head because it's enclosed in a circle. And it, it, and it, I, I haven't tested this scientifically, but they said in the description that you wear this and you will protect yourself from ambient radiation from the sun and from electronic devices. And they're actually, I don't have one, but they're actually little things you can buy on Amazon that detect the radiation in your home, like would detect not the, not the radio signal, but the radiation. Um, and those are like 30 bucks. I should get one, but I'd probably be, Oh my gosh, that has too much radiation. It has to go. <laughs> I'd probably get all paranoid, but you know, those old science sci-fi movies when they had the Geiger counters checking the radiation to see if those zombies were coming <laughs> and they were all irradiated because they were out of Chernobyl, Russia, where the nuclear, uh, power, plan exploded i mean yeah that's pretty scary but they actually sell these they're only like 30 bucks and they don't call them uh geiger counters anymore but they're radiation detectors um so this could protect you from radiation uh I, i'm not saying big levels of it <laughs> but what would come from the, the sun which can be a lot if you're out all day um and if you fly in an airplane or from being around electronics like your smartphone and your computer and remember try to keep those further away from you if possible and oh yeah and i have special glasses that have the blue lens um a blue light filter on them so set your phone to blue light filter mode and if you can do that on your computer do that as well and um get those special reading glasses that have blue light filters in them that will protect your eyes from the harmful blue light that comes from uh, electronics, cell phones, and computers. The blue light is goes up high on the measure of light waves, higher than the yellow or red or white lights, actually. Um, it's good to know a little science. I love science. I was going to be a scientist. <laughs> that didn't work out, but I'm kind of on the edge, you know? Um, so... So get one of these to help protect you from radiation in a small amount. So you know it's not going to protect you if you're at Chernobyl. <laughs> and I don't recommend going there. That stuff's going to be radioactive for like at least another thousand years. <laughs> um, yeah, stay away from radium <laughs> uh, and uranium <laughs> and all those things. Poor Marie Curie, when she discovered radium, um, it unleashed uh, terrible things on the world, and that's not her fault. I mean, somebody would have discovered it, but she ended up, um, when she died, she had radiation poisoning, and she was blind and anemic. And, um, yeah, and there's a movie called Radon Girls about women in the 1930s, young women who worked at a factory, and they painted the dials of watches with radioactive radium to make the numbers glow in the dark, and they would put the the little paintbrushes full of radium on their tongues to lick them to make the points better to paint the numbers and they got terrible radiation poisoning in their jaws and faces and all over their bodies and cancer and it killed them it killed a lot of them it shortened their lives and one line in that movie, which I would recommend, but it's going to cause nightmares <laughs> and you're going to be like, I'm never going anything anymore that glows in the dark, never. Um, is one of the girls, when they had a big court case, she said, you know, our bones will glow for a thousand years. 
So radiation does that. It looks beautiful maybe because it's all glowy and green, you know. But um, get something like this to protect yourself from everyday radiation from your electronics and from the sun if you're out a lot. Okay, I mean, of course, sunscreen does also. That protects from UV light. Uh, this is a little different. Look it out. Don't believe me. <laughs> Go. I bought this on Amazon for 100 bucks, and then they raised it down. They lowered the price to 80 and I, I sent them an email. Hey, come on. Give it to me for 80 Can I a refund? They're like, hey, you've got to check the price, lady. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so look for the good deals. And remember, you can never have too many gadgets, in my opinion. Well, I guess you could. You know, you don't want a bunch of junk in your whole closet. But, but keep your eye out, and you can do this on a budget. I got most of my stuff at Walmart or for free online from my prepper guys just by paying postage. And the stuff that I had to buy that was expensive was well worth it. Um, yeah, because your life could depend on what you have in your prepper bag, your to-go bag, ready to head out that door if you have to leave your home. But don't leave your home unless you absolutely have to because it's better to defend your home with your neighbors and hopefully you get along all right with them. If not, you're going to need all that, you know, the mental health guidance and psychology and prayers. <laughs> um, but if you have to leave your home and evacuate, get your bags ready to go and have some gear in your car already in the car. I'm going to have to put a lot of this stuff back in my car. And remember to create Faraday cages. You can use that just with tin foil. I recommend the heavy duty stuff. Fold it a couple of times. Um, and you can do this. You don't have to have a PhD in electronics, engineering, or chemistry, or physics. You don't have to be Einstein. And you can do this as a woman. So this is Lana Lisa Williams, AKA Survival Woman. Hoping you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and I didn't talk too much. Saying bye and stay safe out there and may God bless you.